So, John, it's a pleasure to have you on today, a class footballer, and certainly from, from where I'm from, what, what regarded as one of the all-time greats. How are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm good, Baker. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, enjoying the sunny weather, making the most of it uh, out in the back garden. But the only downside is you've got, you've got to catch up with your summer jobs, your maintenance jobs, painting and all that. I know. I know you've just told me that off camera, but at least you've at least you've got the day for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm not the best. I must admit, I'm not. I do my best. I do my best. Anyway, how are you doing? Okay. Yeah, good. Thanks, and I'm really excited to chat to you today. As I say, um, I'm a big Middlesbrough fan, so to have you on is a pleasure. My my pleasure as well, pal. You can ask whatever you want, mate. Don't hold back. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give as an honest an opinion as I possibly can, mate. Yeah, there's certainly certainly a few good ones in there. Um, so we'll, we'll come to them later on. But I'm, I'm going to start today where I do with most of my guests in, in the professions, whether they're a footballer, musician, just ask where, where did it all begin for you and your love for football when you were younger? Well, I mean, I was uh, the youngest of five, uh, five kids. I had, uh, two big brothers, two big sisters, where we lived. I mean, I was brought up, born in Lennox Town, but brought up in Kirk and Tiller. From where we lived was a football pitch uh, right outside our house there was. So in those days, the only thing to do was go and play football with older boys. And uh, I, th I, I was that small, I'd run through the legs at times. Uh, but no, no, you know what it's like as well, but being the, the little and you, you take a few a few clips in the ear and a few kicks, it, it sure toughens you up. Uh Many a time I used to go running back into my mum and dad and what have you. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, that's that's what it was. I mean, I was I was born in Lennox Town. Uh, I was actually born in, in a castle, Lennox Castle, uh, which when I was born, it was a maternity hospital. Then it then it became a mental hospital, and now it's Glasgow Celtic's training ground. It's listed oh, wow. listed building, so it's so that's my. My link up with, with with Celtic, and hence that's well, I, I not why I was a supporter. I was a supporter because all my the rest of the family supported Celtic, so that was my background. And uh, but I mean, it was football, football, football for me at school. Uh, as I say, I was brought up in Kirk and Tillich. but at the age of uh, probably the age of 13, 14, I was scouted by the Coventry scout, and he he. He got me to join a club up in Glasgow called Possel, Possel YM, who kind of we should play for as a young boy as well. Uh, and basically, they had a link with Coventry. They were Coventry's nursery team in Glasgow. So from the age of 13, every summer hold, every school holiday, I would go down and trial to, to Coventry. So uh, what happened, the day I left school at the age of 16, uh, I left. I left school and signed for Coventry City as an apprentice uh, that that evening, the day, the evening I uh, left school. And that was me leaving home as a, as, a, as a young lad at 16. Was it tough? Yeah, very, very tough. You picture leaving your your, your mum and dad, your brothers and sisters and what have you. My dog, who was my, my, my dog. Uh, so, it, so venture south to Coventry and we would only get home what, every six weeks for a long weekend. And it was tough. It was tough. Uh, homesickness played. It played a lot, a, a big part for the majority of the boys in those days. But fortunately, we had good coaches down there at the time that, that helped us cope with loan sickness. I hope I don't know, a homesickness. John Sillett, Colin Dobson, and uh, so I signed a two-year apprenticeship. And I think the club thought after a year, because within a few months of me signing, they, they, they threw me straight in the reserve team playing with seasoned professionals as such. But come the end of my, my first year of apprenticeship, I think they thought, once I get back, went back to Scotland, I may not come back down. Yeah. So what they did, they offered me a professional contract. So they shortened my apprenticeship and gave me a pro a year early. So I, I came back down in, uh, in that summer. And what well, within a few months, I was, in, I, was, I was playing in the first team, which was, and, and that was... So you're probably saying, well, less than 18 months after leaving school, uh, I was playing top flight football. I mean, I remember my debut was uh, Dave Sexton, the old Chelsea Man United manager. He gave me my debut for Coventry uh, at Tottenham Hotspur away uh, in December, December 81. 
we hadn't won away all season and we won that day 2-1 and it was certainly it was it was you know, it's like I touched on it there like 18 months prior to you're a schoolboy you then you're playing against let's say top class players yeah. and what have you at, at down at, at Spurs and also beating them as well so it was Coventry at the time had probably the best youth set up in the country if you were good enough they would chuck you in and certainly that was that was with uh as I said, home home sickness played a part, but the, the but the football side of it was was excellent in the respect with the coaches uh, and being given an opportunity. And I was going to say it's very impressive how quickly you made your debut and broke into the Coventry first team. But I've had quite a lot of footballers on. Another person who was in a similar situation to you was Jamie Redknapp. I know he joined Liverpool at a very young age, and he's just said the same. He said the same as you just did there. It must be very hard in like terms of the homesickness and like moving away from home at such a young age. But is it almost like a factor that you you you, you can't turn it down and you you've got to take this? Otherwise, it's it's a chance at your dream playing football. What you really want to do, just going away if you don't take this one chance that you've got. Well, to be honest, me, it's like <laughs> you're right. But you say there, like my mum and dad. Uh, I mean, I joked about it at the time. I'm been saying oh, I've been sent to Coventry. Uh, but my mum and dad, they, they, basically, they had to be cruel to be kind. Yeah. They, deep down, they didn't want to lose their, their, their youngest son uh, leaving home at such a young age. But they recognised it was a fantastic opportunity. A fantastic opportunity for me. And they had said, John, you go down there, if it doesn't work out, you can always come back, son. Uh, you may only get one opportunity to go to play your trade down, down south, down in England. Go for it, son. Go for it. And I think it was hurting them to say that. But they says, go on. Go and, go and spread your wings. Spread your wings and, and, and give it a go. And uh, and I must admit, we, when we did go home every six weeks, I mean, it was like, <laughs> we get back. We're playing the youth team Saturday morning. So I'll get back Saturday night. And then we'd be leaving Monday tea time. And there was there was always tears leaving your mum and dad at, yeah. at, at, the train, at Glasgow Central uh, train station. But they were there for me all the time. And at times when I remember ringing up home, calling my mum and dad at home and, and just saying, this is, this is torture. I'm crying my eyes out, for truth be told. And, and a lot of parents would just say, right, come on and just come home. But my mum was tough. She was saying, well, what you got to do if you come up here? You're throwing away an opportunity. And she put a phone down. She'd be, years later, she told me she'd be crying her eyes out. So she had to be strong and tough. Uh, and certainly that she installed that into me as well. I guess it all comes with the quote: "You have to, you have to be cruel to be kind." Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So, definitely so. Definitely so. Before you went to Coventry, um, at home, um, uh, before moving away, was it was it was it all the Celtic side of things in your family? Because I know Lennox Town isn't too far from Glasgow, so I was wondering, we were we were, we were all the Celtic side of things at home. Well, what, what it was, Monko. Monko was a professional. Yeah, because I, I think that's it, it, like football's like quite heavily running your family, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, Monko. Yeah. Uh, so my dad's brother. I mean, he he played for Birmingham City. Then he moved out to the, the, the America. Played out for Portland Timbers and what have you. Uh, that was Monko Paul Paul Hendry. Yeah. His son was Lee Hendry. Yeah, his Lee, my cousin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, Lee played for Aston Villa in England and what have you. Uh, and then, then my own son plays at Bradford City. Look, look, uh, look, plays at Bradford now. So it's yeah, it isn't the family there? But as a kid growing up, yeah, it was just yeah, it was like football, football, football for me. I mean, I'll, I'll be playing, for, I'll probably play for three teams on a weekend, and yeah. I'll be training every night. I would come back, I would come back from 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 school, and my my job was was walking the dogs. Uh, coming in from school, walking the dogs, and when I went out with the dogs, it was with the two dogs and a football. So as I'm walking them, I'm down the, the pitch, keep his up, striking the ball, everything else. So every day, even when I'm walking the dogs, I'm, I'm still practicing my skills as such. So it was, it was, it was innocent. It was innocent uh, 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 background for me. It was just total football, uh, and hence why I loved the game. Which 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 players did you look up to the most as a young kid? Uh, well, being a Celtic fan, I mean uh, Jimmy Johnson, 
Jinky yeah. Johnson, as well before you, he was a little maestro. And then after him, Kieran Dalglish. Yeah. Kieran Dalglish, that was, that was my boyhood hero as well. Uh, and we'll mention him later on because it's, it was quite an iconic uh, event that happened for me uh, when he was manager at Blackburn. And that was my boyhood hero. So uh, we're going to touch on that one later on and what have you. But uh, but that was my no that was that was that was my two heroes them two Ken Dalglish and, uh, and and me Jinky Jimmy Johnston and both obviously attack, attacking players to suit what you were what mm -hmm. I, I know um, across your career you played out on the wing and up front which was where you played at middles but where was where, where where was your initial thought as as a youngster did you prefer playing down the middle or did you prefer it out wide. Well, later on in my career, I played through the middle. Um, and for truth be told, uh, I did prefer it through the middle. Yeah. Because you're doing all your... With, without the ball, you're doing your donkey work across the line, across the front line. But whereas when you're playing out wide, more often than not, all your, all your sort of donkey work, when, when the other teams get the ball, you're running back the way. So you're running up and down the line. And sometimes you didn't get a touch of the ball. But it suited me better running across the line. And I remember when I was a young lad at um, at uh, Coventry, and John Sillett, uh, he was a sort of coach at the same, and he had said because I, I started as a winger at Coventry, and John had said to me, he says, John, he says you're a winger now, but I can see you later on in your career, you'll be you, you'll be a striker, you know, because you because you've, you've got low centre of gravity, you be you're quick, uh, you can hold the ball up well, and you can score goals and make goals, and he says, but that will come later on in your career. Sure enough, it was absolutely yeah. spot on. It was spot on. The next chapter of your career, um, obviously, you, you left Coventry after making your name, then you moved to Bradford, um, yeah. if I'm right. And first season, very successful, um, won, won the Division Three title, sealed promotion, chipped in with nine goals from right wing. But on, on the last day of that season, I know probably which will be the, the worst day of your career. That tragic incident struck with the Bradford fire. I mean, it was such a tragic event. Nobody should ever go to a football match and not return home. But how did that affect you as a player? Did it knock you in any sort of way? Or because I mean, it must have. I can't imagine how hard it was to actually be involved in. Basically, the events of eleventh of May, nineteen eighty-five. It didn't just change me as a player. It changed me as a person as well. Yeah. Because just seeing the horror uh, of that day, I mean, people, the fear, the screaming, the tears, just the horror and, and mums and dads, grandparents, children shouting for their loved ones. And as you said, they just come down to celebrate with us. We'd won the third division title for some reason. We'd, been, we'd given them a trophy before the game, and this happened just before half time. And it was just a, the worst day of my life, the worst day of any Bradford fans, Bradford players' life, because you don't expect fifty six people to go to a game and not come back. And we, I mean, in the aftermath of it and everything else, we we we. we went to a lot of the memorials at the cathedral. We went to the hospital to see a lot of the, the, the victims who survived. And of course, we went to a lot of uh, uh, functions, charity functions, uh, to raise money for the Bradford Disaster Appeal. And we were without a home for, what, 18 months or so? For the next 18 months, we, I mean, we couldn't get back to Valley Parade. We had to play at the, the Odd Soul, the rugby ground. We had to play at Leeds United. We had to, to play at Huddersfield Town. And it was just it was just a nightmare. And in those days, there was no... We never, we never get counselling. There was no such... I was, what, 21 years of age. And you're seeing... You're, you're seeing it's, uh, people who you knew had lost their lives come to watch you play in a game of football. And you're just, we had to grow up quick. We had to grow up quick off our own back. And it changed me. As, as a footballer, as a footballer, I mean, I, if, if I had a, 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 a bad game as such, I would take it, I would dwell on it. 
all weekend or all week until the next game. But th that the incident of that day just put the whole thing into football into perspective. And after that, it, I just had the mentality. So that, so that I'll get, get doing my best here. I can only do my best, give it my best shot. If things don't go right, I can't change it. It's only a game of football. Just go out there and give your 100%. Yeah. That's just do your absolute. And I think that's why I was popular wherever I played, because I was just out there and grafted my socks off, gave my whole. Sometimes, I mean, you, you didn't always play well, but as long as you were seen to give your lot, and that's why that's why I, I was accepted uh, the clubs I've played for. So it changed my mentality as a footballer. And, and of course, as a, as, as a person as well. As a, as a person as well. Uh, I had to change after witnessing that. I can't imagine like how something like that must feel as a player because people have like seen football tragedies on the TV and everything, but to actually be on the pitch and witness it firsthand, it must be, it must have literally nearly broke you as a person. Like twenty-one years of age as well is no age, but in 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 a different sort of way. That next season, did, did the squad? Did, was the mentality in the squad like something like? Right, this this really tragic incident has happened, but do we do we come together now and just go all out there next season? Let's achieve something special for the people who've lost their lives and for the club and just for the whole of Bradford. Yeah, I mean it's like for, we, we we all let's say in, in effect we all sort of became blood brothers that day that team, and we only had a, a close knit squad. We we probably only used fourteen players. 14 players we used that season. So that just shows you how tight knit yeah. it, it was at Bradford. And I mean, that was 11th of May, the 11th of May every year, there's a memorial in Bradford, in Centenary Square in Bradford. And I go every single year. There's indeed some of the other players do as well. And it's something which I'll never miss. And it's, and I'll be honest with you, Every year, I mean, I'm in tears, uh, and indeed, not just me. A lot of people, when you see, every year you see the, the families, the families who, when you see them getting older and older, the relations with the people who lost their lives, going up and laying, the wreaths, laying, laying down the wreaths at memorials, and it's a, it's a choker, it's a choker. And, it, and when Abide With Me comes on, the, the play Abide With Me, and I just, oof, I just well up, I do. I just and that's but the least we can do, the least we can do has been part of that team is go and show our respects. Those people come down and watch us what, 37 years ago. We it's the least we can do is to go down and show our, our respects to, to those people and and always will do for as long as I live. I mean it's just such, such, such a hard thing for the whole of football because everybody comes together. A lot of times, say a lot of people say that the Bradford City disaster is a forgotten one. And and I dare you, you ask a lot of children in, in Bradford, and a lot of them don't know anything about it. So that's why it's, it certainly won't, we will not be forgotten in the Hendry household. Never, never. Because that's what I sort of meant. Like was was the next scene sort of. These people who came to watch you, do you want to celebrate their life by going and achieving something special on the pitch? Yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, we, we when we go and see the victims and the, the survivors in hospital, and they're, they're in hospital, and they're all they get their arms and hands and, and, feet and all the, uh, the the bad burns and, and cellophane and what have you. And each and every one of them were, were up front, uh, were, were upbeat, saying, "Come on, come on." Let's have a good season next year. Let's have a really good season next year. And certainly that was it. Well, that's just getting back to the point I made. We just went out there and gave it our lot. We just went out and gave it our best. As I say, it changed us. It's changed our mentality to, to being a professional sportsman. Yeah, and it must have been such a hard day. But um, Brad, on, on a more positive note, Bradford did become... A, a big part of you spent a lot more years there. One hundred and seventy-three consecutive league games, I think you played there. As a, 
Has anybody else ever match time football? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have. I mean, what what that was? It was uh, it was. So I had four seasons at Bradford, and I played every single. So season one played every league game. Season two played every league game. Season three played every league game. Season four played every league game apart from the last league game of the season. So it was the final league game of the oh. season. And I missed it because I'd been sent off uh, a week before against Man City. And, and I say to this day, I say to this day, uh, I, sh I should not have been sent off. It was a disgraceful decision. Now, the referee that day, could, could we, Bradford were trying to get promotion and the big rivals were, were, were the Borough, Middlesbrough. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were both going for it. And the referee that, that day, it sent me off at Man City, was Ken Lupton from Stocks and the Tees. Ah. <laughs> and I'm I've sure. seen, yeah, honestly, I've seen Ken many a time over the years, many a time over the years. And I said, and I've just asked him, I says, Ken, why the heck did you send me off? Was it because you're a Borough fan and we're big rivals? And he never said anything, he just winked at me, he did. Just think to me, but uh, I think yeah. I think there's definitely the reason behind that one, and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I, th I don't think in today's game you'd quite you'd quite get away with that. I think it'd probably be quite easily sniffed out. Oh, Ken won't admit to it. He won't admit to it. It just is a little grin in his face as such. So I missed that uh, final game of the season. As I say, that was the first one in four years I missed in the last game, and of course uh, that that season. Bradford beat Borough twice in the league. And, and it ended up that, that uh, Bradford and Borough played each other in playoffs in Borough. So Bradford won the two league games against Borough. Then they won the first playoff game against the Borough. So they beat them three times. But, but Borough won the game at Ayrson Park 2-0. So that meant that Borough knocked Bradford out of the playoffs. They did. Uh, and, and Borough beat Chelsea so Borough got promoted to that uh, and Bradford stayed down Bradford stayed down in, in, the, champ in the championship yeah because I know the league would have been because you, you wouldn't have had the Premier League then would you as such could have been no, Division right. 1 yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it was a top flight it was promotion into a top flight and so when I left Bradford I mean when I went to Bradford we were, we were in the third tier and when I left when I left them that summer, we were just a, a breath away from getting into the top tier. Borough, Borough stopped it, basically. Borough stopped Bradford getting into the top tier. That sort of will have come a bit of benefit you later on in your career when you actually joined Middlesbrough, but we'll get yeah. to that um, very soon. But briefly, after Bradford, um, you signed for Newcastle United, where you spent a year. Mm -hmm. um, I know you, you didn't spend the longest amount of time there, but how did it feel to sign for Newcastle at the time? We were probably... Probably one of the biggest teams you'd you'd sign for, because Newcastle was, always been a yeah. Massive. I think it was, it was just the wrong type of sign for Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, when I when I joined joined the club, I mean, uh, unbeknown to me, the club were in the middle of a, a, a potential takeover. So John Hall was trying to take the club over, and the supporters were wanting that as well. It's a bit similar to what it's been like uh, under Mike Ashley in recent years. The supporters wanted them out. Well, supporters uh, wanted the chairman out or the board out when I was there. And it was like, I couldn't believe it. So instead of running out on a Saturday afternoon to the chance of Newcastle, Newcastle, we were running out to the chance of sack the board, even before a ball was kicked. So it was, it was very much the wrong time to sign for Newcastle, the wrong time in that respect. It was tough. And if Maradona had been playing for Newcastle that year, it wouldn't have made any difference. It was tough. It was just, it was just turmoil off the pitch. It was just, it was just crazy. Uh, so, come the end of the season, uh, I was sold at profit. I think they made a hundred grand profit on me, uh, and it was just, it was just solely to to to, to try and to try and thwart the new owners to, to try and buy uh, buy up shares and what have you. So it was, I never asked for a move. It was just, uh, yeah. it was just circumstances. And then 
straight after that you went went, went, went to lead lead for a season and then um I, I just want to move I, I want to move on to the to the big bit now um only at Leeds for a season but Middlesbrough which yeah Leeds got, Leeds got promoted it was a successful yeah. season because Leeds got promoted into, into the top flight yeah so um achieved um, a promotion there but um now, now Middlesbrough obviously I'm a big Middlesbrough fan like I say, regarded as one of the all all time greats down here. Um, we don't quite see players like you anymore these days, like. But, um, <laughs> but um, what persuaded you to come to Middlesbrough in 1990, which was the start of a six year stay at the club? What persuaded? It was like uh, <laughs> I tell you how it happened. It was quite because I missed the back end of the season at Leeds. I had a problem with my knee. Uh, and I thought, right, so they went away on holidays and, and um, what have you. So I come in in a close season before the rest of the players yeah. to do voluntary training. Uh, so I thought, right, I'll, I'll do it with the physio. And the rest of the boys were starting the following week. So I was down at Ellen Road, trained with the physio, one, I'd been about three, four days in that week. And I come back from Ellen Road, come into my house, and there was a note in the kitchen table, please ring Colin Todd. So I ran Colin Todd, he says, John, I've agreed a few Leeds United. Can you come and talk to me? And I went, you what? I said, who's left? I've just been in this morning. Nothing's been said to me. And to this day, I've never spoke to Eric Wilkinson. I'm still waiting on the call from one of these. One of these <laughs> doctors, you know? so, when, when, so when Colin Todd, uh, uh, no one at Leeds had, had told me. So when Colin Todd said that, I says, I says, Ugh. I said, I don't want that way. I said, it's, it's a bit naughty, that man management. I mean, no one's got a decency to call me. So I jumped in my car, went and spoke to Colin Todd and signed. And that's that's how it came about. That's how it came about. It was simple as that it was. I mean, that, that just shows you what goes on in football. You're just, at times, you're just a piece of meat, the truth be told. Just a, a piece of meat in between all of these clubs. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that was me. And, and when I went there, Colin Todd had said to me, he went and he says, John, I went, I want you to come here and settle down. You've had about four clubs. We were the fourth club in two years. Bradford, Newcastle, Leeds, Borough. Fourth, come here and get happy. Be happy and play football. And, and hence, I tell you what, I was happy. And it was, I mean, I loved it. I, I, I absolutely loved it in Teesside. It was absolutely brilliant. I know when, when you first joined the club, were you, were you, were you a little bit sceptical? Because I know... Newcastle and Leeds, it's two clubs that hold quite a little bit of a rivalry with Middlesbrough. Were mm. you um, worried in any sort of win how the fans would take to you? No, 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 not at all. Not right. at all, because it's, <laughs> I think we, we go back to what we spoke earlier on about, about the Bradford fire. Yeah. It made me, it just changed me and my mentality was go, just go out there and give it, give it your best shot, give it your everything as such. So that there was no there was no thoughts like that entered my my head. All that th thought thoughts in my head were just give it your lot and they'll take to you. And uh, and I certainly I think that was the case. That was the case. Because I can I can talk, I can see where you're coming from there because you've seen these absolutely tragic events on mm -hmm. in a match of football which will never which you'll you'll never see again and um, will almost be the worst point of your career which will, will is. And um, I bet you almost think to yourself, right? Well, not nothing, nothing can be worse than that. So what, 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 what have I really got to fear? Absolutely, it puts everything into perspective, and it puts saying, right, okay. The bottom line is, Baker. I mean, it's, it's your job. I mean, it's, it's my job, and my job is to go out there and play football, go out there and try and win football games, go out there and entertain people, and certainly that's what I, that's what I sort of aspire to do. I know certainly the, the Middlesbrough spell, it was um, a very successful one. I mean, um, there's many, many highlights for you, um, achieved promotion, scored the last ever goal at Ayrson Park. How did how did that one feel? Well, I mean, well, if we do it in sort of chron chronological order, it was like, I mean, that first season there was, I mean, Colin had signed me, Colin Todd, and had come in and... Uh, It was a goal against Millwall, uh, 1990. Yeah. The, 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 the solo. Yeah, the solo goal. Yeah. I've, still, I've got the trophies. The trophies just over over there, actually. I've still, because it won 
northeast goal of the season it did. Yeah. And, and I've still got the trophy over there as such. Uh, and it's just like a, a little trophy with a bottle, a bottle of cognac in it. The cognac's gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the trophy's still there. Uh, I've got a different bottle of cognac in there. Uh, but that was, I mean, that was, to this day, because obviously I've worked doing it in about our match days, doing the hospitality. And to this day, I mean... Uh, a lot of the older Borough fans, John, talk us through the Millwall goal, talk us through that goal and what have you. And I say to people, I said, well, the first thing in my mind was, Bernie, please stay on side. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and sure enough, when I got it, I mean, Robbie must have played it on the edge of the box, just a little six-yard pass. Great pass, Robbie, well done, Phil. <laughs> uh, and and my, one of my biggest assets was running with the ball. Just like run, yeah. run, I could, I, a good balance could go right, could go left. And, and as I say, I was quite quick as well. So I could run with the ball. And my initial thought was, right, okay, I'll run with the ball here. And if the further I get up the pitch, then our back line can get pressed up. It's giving them a break, giving them a breather as such. But once I've ran, as I say, Bernie was out the way, he ran out to the right wing. And once I started running, and it just seemed to all open up for us, open up for us. And uh, before I know it, I'm on the edge of the box, and you think, well, wow, I'll never get another opportunity like this. Didn't panic. It was on my, my left hand side, and it was it was as if it was just it was as if it was just meant to be, and all I did was just stroked it in into the bottom corner of, uh, on my left peg, and I just remember thinking, wow, you don't score them every week. Uh, fantastic feeling, and front of the whole gate as well. Front of the whole gate, and it was, it was a great feeling. I mean, it's it's an amazing goal, and it's um, like you say, not every week you see a goal like that. Would you say that's your favourite goal professionally? Then in your career, not just Middlesbrough. Uh, I scored a good one a few weeks later against Norwich in the in the League Cup. Obviously, Norwich uh, were, were top flight as well, uh, and I just cut in from the right wing. It was maybe in the same month, in fact, and I cut in from uh, the the right wing. And then, and then I just curled one into the top corner from yes, the left. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I know which one you... Yeah. And, and that, I, I caught it sweetly, I did. Caught it sweetly, I did. I mean, it was... But that's probably not as not as much uh, remembered as, as, as the Millwall one. It's, that's the one that everyone remembers, just for the just for the yardage I made, I made up, really. So it was... Both of those goals are special. Both of them uh, were really special for us. I mean, as, as I say, we haven't quite seen um, pl players be able to do that for a while here at Middlesbrough. Do you fancy getting your boots back on and getting on the pitch in the wild the next season? <laughs> oh, God, I, I wish. I wish. Without my best favourite goal, no. Them two certainly were the ones for the Borough, but I mean, I, I, I scored quite iconic ones at Barnsley as well against Man yeah. United. So they, they were later on in my career. So they, they were great goals as well, uh, from my point of view. Well, ones that gave me a lot of pleasure. In that respect. But no, you get so that season we we got to the playoffs and Neil Warnock's team, Neil Warnock's not County, beat us in the fan, uh, sorry, in the semi final of the playoffs that season. Yeah. Uh, and and Colin Todd left and Lenny Lenny Lawrence came in. Yeah. Uh and, and to be honest with you, I mean, Colin had used me just solely as, as a wide player instead of using me uh, through the middle as well. Uh, but when Lenny came in, he, he used me in both positions and eventually he, he, he paired me upside, uh, up top with Paul Wilkinson. Paul Wilkinson, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was a master stroke by Lenny. That, because Wilco and myself, we had a, we had a, we had a very, very good combination. Uh, it was like telepathic. He was like a big, he was like a big lad that would take all the, the smashes, the elbows, the, the broken noses and everything. And I was I was just a little lad that used to run fast and score a goal. Uh but no, we would we would a great like great link up between us. And certainly not just at Borough, at Barnsley as well. And we were successful at both clubs. So is that is that sort of like a partnership that stands out for you well throughout your career then? You oh, and, definitely. You Paul Wilkinson. Definitely so because I mean as I said, when I was out wide, you don't really get a partnership uh, because you're out wide and your job is up and down, up and down, getting crosses in and what have you. But whereas if you're a striker, one or two strikers, if you can get a, get, get a link up uh, where the chemistry is good, 
and you get success. So we got promotion with the Borough in that season. Yeah. We got promotion down at Wolves. Uh and we and also at Barnsley. Barnsley got promotion for the only time in their history. They've been only promoted once to top flight, and it was that season at Walcombe myself were there. So it's uh so it was no, that was memorable times. Uh, and and it was it was great to play alongside them. It, it was great because as I say, we we helped each other, we complemented each other ever so well with it. Can we talk about that last ever goal at Ayrton Park? How 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 did how did it feel scoring that in such an iconic stadium, two T side? Well, it was special in, in respect that, that if we hadn't won, if we hadn't won that game, it would have meant nothing. Yeah, it would have meant nothing. We were leaving uh, the old ground, the fantastic old ground for pastures new, the Riverside. And and all we are focusing on is trying to get promotion. Brian Robson's first season in charge. Yeah. And, and our aim is to get promotion in the top flight. And when you score, I mean, obviously I was fortunate I scored at two goals that day in the, the, the Luton victory. But you don't think anything of it. Oh, that's the last goal at Essen Park. Or when you <laughs> score. You don't, you, oh, you, oh, no, you don't even think that. No, it's like... All you're thinking on is getting three points. Yeah, yeah. Because all you're focused on, on is, right, we want promotion. We can only get promotion if we win this game. It doesn't matter who scores the goals or anything like that. And, and honestly, honestly, that was all we wanted, was to get promotion. When you were moving ground in the summer, and we wanted it to be top-flight football. Uh, so, I mean, my... Excuse me. <laughs> in those days, you, you probably wear two pair of match boots a season. Nowadays, we yeah. wear a different pair every week. Two pair of match boots a season. Very and different not, to now. <laughs> oh, very much. I mean, I would, I would wear my, my moulded soles for, for training and then the studs. Then the studs for... Yeah. Uh, for, for my match, match day. And you don't wear two, two pair all season. So, of course... Scored the goal against Luton, which was the last game at some Park. Then the following, following, Saturday, or following weekend, we played Tranmere away. And you've got the same boots on. Well, when the final whistle goes, the, the Borough fans come on the pitch. And, I, my, my, and my boots were robbed. My boots were stolen off me. But you don't think anything of it. You don't think, those are iconic. Yeah. Those, those boots are iconic. Those, those are the last boots that, that, that scored the goal at Essen Park. And it wasn't until what, maybe 20 odd years later that uh, I think it was Archie Stevens had said, he says, oh, uh, my mate's got your boot, John. And I think, what are you on about? He says, yeah, the last goal at, at, uh, at uh, Ayrson Park, he's got it. And I went, I says, he robbed it. The guy who robbed my boot, he's got it still. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, do you want it back? I says, too right. Too much <laughs> right. I want it back, yeah. I said, it'll be a nice touch. Anyway, he convinced him, he convinced him uh, yeah. to give us the boot, boot back. And I get that back. I've got it here now, one sec. One sec. I get... The boot get the boot come back in a Morrison's uh, sorry in a in a shopping bag. But my father in law my father in law made made this for me. Oh wow. There it is in all of its glory. Proper case there, and I don't think you can see that it's there's a little bit silver, but it's just got John Henry's boot. boot. That's called the last ever goal at Ashton Park, 30th of April Wow. Yeah. So that's uh that was missing for twin nearly twenty-five years. For twenty odd years, and it's it's, it's now it's pride of place in the Hendry household. Us, and it's uh, and I've gave a lot away over the years, you know, for charity, you know, memorabilia and what have you. And uh, but, but my lads, my son said to me, Dad, Dad, don't give that away. Don't give that away. Uh, and hence, you can't. No, but but obviously, with my father-in-law, he made he made a little presentation. He was a carpenter. God bless him. And uh, he, he made he made that for me a couple of Christmases ago. 
So I was going to play the place, yeah. So, uh, no, no, that was that was a century uh, to the old ground. Another, another one of my special days at the Borough was, I touched on it earlier on, my hero was Kenny Dalglish. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, so when he was manager of Blackburn. Yeah. So it was the first, this is another thing you don't think about either. The first ever, uh, so we get promoted under Lionel Lawrence in uh, 92, 93, or was it 91? 92 we get promoted. So the first season of the Premier League was 92, 93. And Kenny Dalglish brought his Blackburn team, Shearer, all those guys, yeah. to Tearson Park. Very good team. Big, big, Dalglish is my hero as a wee boy growing up. And, uh, and the Borough won 3 2. We won 3 2 that day in the Premier League. Yeah, and you, that's your hat trick, yeah. My hat trick. Yeah. yeah. That, my hat trick. So that's. So that was that that was special for me going back to my roots and everything else as a young boy. Kenny was my hero, and for to score a hat trick in the in the top flight against your boyhood hero, that was something special for me. And uh, it was that was actually the third third hat trick in the Premier League. Uh, uh, Cantona scored the first one, Eric Cantona. Uh, Mark Robbins get a second one. Then you the third. Then I get I get a third yeah. one, and. Uh, it's quite funny because my, my brothers were telling me it was uh, last summer. My brothers were telling me it was on the, the radio up in Scotland. Uh, Name the, the six players who have scored uh, hat tricks. Scottish players who have scored hat tricks in the, in the English Premier League. And obviously, I was the first Scotsman to do it. Yeah. And my brothers, my brothers got all five apart from me. They, they didn't know that I'd scored that. Yeah. They'd, they'd, for, they'd forgot. Oh. It, was quite, oh. it was quite funny. It was yeah, quite funny, but. Uh, no, it was that that was special. As I say, I've got that ball. I, I, I've gave loads of stuff away over the years, and, and I've got that the shirt from that game, and I've got the ball, ball. from that game as well. So it's uh, they, they, they're special. They're special things uh, to me, Baker. As uh, so that so no stacks of highlights at, at the borough. I mean, uh, with the promotion with not just with, with, with Lenny, but with with, with, uh, with Robbo as well. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's one thing I want to spit on. Um, um, my dad came to a, came to an evening with you a couple of years ago at the Sitchcom in Red Car, and um, I think you mentioned something about a, a drinking challenge with Robo. <laughs> how, how 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 did that one go? <laughs> right, what I must say is, it was the end of the season, right? So we yeah. we had gained promotion. Watch what I'm saying. My missus is makes him make sure my missus isn't listening, by the way. <laughs> uh, we'd uh, we'd already gained promotion, so the season was finished. Yeah, the season was finished, it was the end of the season, mission accomplished. And I just I just challenged uh, Brian Robson to a drinking competition, and it was like probably the worst offer I made in my life. Well, not probably, definitely the worst offer did of my life. Did, did, didn't beat him. Oh, did I hate? Did I hate him? No, no, no. At the end of the day, you you you, you are a Scot. Scots are renowned for uh, liking a good drink, but was it was was it was even that not enough to beat Rob? Or? It was like boy. It was like, it was like boy. It was like boy against man. It was. I'll tell you. <laughs> it, it, it saw me off. It saw me off, and I was like, I went away. But let's say, like, tail between my legs, just say, I'm well and truly beaten. Well, and, uh, and I would not advise anyone to, to take Brian Robson on the drinking competition because there's only be one winner, only one winner. It's uh, but no, no, it was the, the old saying, "Work hard, play hard." We now that would never have happened through the season. This this was the end of the season, and it yeah. was much. And you've been promoted too, so yeah, you did yeah. it. Yeah, it was, cel it was, it was celebration, cel celebration. Yeah, no, no, but it was no, not not a good idea to take the manager on, on, on a burger. What yeah. was what, what was he like, Brian Robson, in general as a manager and mm -hmm. as a manager off the pitch? Well, is is a person, a uh, fantastic guy. Yeah, uh, we all respected him, uh, and I, I remember when at the time, I mean, Lenny's last season, it was a wee bit flat the last season, uh, and I remember him speaking to the chairman Steve Gibson and saying. 
I says, Chairman, I says, we need some, we need something. The place needs a spark. And he, he says, John, there's something big going to happen, don't you worry. Because I think I was about 30, 31 at the time, and I, I needed a spark as well. And sure enough, Rob will come in. He actually ra rang me uh, when he was given a job. Uh, he says, can I, can I meet you somewhere? Him and Viv, we want to meet you. You're like a senior player. We want, we want to know your opinion and what, what you think we need and what have you, our, our requirements. And I met up with Robbo and Viv and I, and, I, and I told them my thoughts because I was an experienced player. I'd, I'd been involved in promotions before. Uh, and, and, and I told them, I told them, what, I gave them honest, honest thoughts. And one of them was, I, I, we need a big, ugly centre-half. A big, yeah. and he said, Nigel Pearson. I said, perfect. He'd be perfect for that. So it was, uh, no, we had a good chat. And so that certainly that, when he's, when he's asking for my opinion, I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I respected that. Uh, and when he was on the pitch, just his presence, obviously, just his presence on the pitch that, that first year, it helped us, his experience helped us. And uh, But on and off the pitch, I've got nothing but res utmost respect. He was a great guy and a great footballer. Talking of this, because um, when Brian Robson, when, when Brian Robson was in charge, eventually he started to bring in the likes of Fabrizio Ravinelli, Juninho, Mikel Beck, which was your which was your last season at Middlesbrough. Um, so how did it feel when all of them came, and what was Juninho like? Juninho was uh, not only uh, a very good footballer. And it's like, I mean, a lot of times you speak to players and they say, oh, or, or, or supporters say, oh, would you, it's not right, they should be on that sort of this. But I, I, was, I never had that outlook. I always thought, listen, I'm just delighted to be here to part of, part of the adventure. I signed my contract. I was happy when I signed my contract because somebody's in a hell of a lot more than us. Us lot, Robin L, Janino, and that. So what? That's, that's their business. I've done mine. But Janino is a person, the Brazilian boys were different class of they were different class, great characters to have a, have around the, uh, the football club. And they, it was them, that, more than anyone, put, put the club on that, on that pedestal as such. Uh, and, and for the club to sort of entice those sort of players, it was exciting times. And I, and I remember speaking to Steve Gibson not that long ago, and I says, come on and give what was your best times? And he just went to Rob Williams, which yeah. you know, all them guys, because it was, it was like... Well, it was like a different level for the borough to entice those world class players. In. I mean, it's it's it, 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 it's it's quite a weird one as well because if you ask any borough fan what was the best season of football at the club, one of the ones that the would say is a relegation season, but um, mm. even though they got relegated, it was still one of the best. And as yeah. you said, Gibbo said the Robbo years. So well, but yeah, but that, that relegation. I mean, I'd left. Yeah, because you. I, I left when I left Borough. Do you leave? The, you left in January, didn't you? 96? No, no, oh. no, no, no. I left October '96. The, the players still, because obviously I'm, um, obviously I'm, I, I, I wasn't born in them days. But could play? Could players still leave? Um, in because yeah, you yeah. have the two, two transfer windows, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, in those days. There was no windows. It was like it was, it, it, there would be a deadline in the second or third uh, Thursday in March. Really? Right. So you you could bring players in through the season, but then you get into March time in the second or third Thursday in March. You weren't allowed to bring players in after that until the following summer. Now what it was in the October time, my contract was up the following summer, and. Uh, and it, but in those few months from the start of the season, I, I was always in the squad. But we've got we've, we've got we've got loads of forwards in. We've got Ravinelli, uh, we've got Janino, we've got Nick, I'm not sure if Nick Bambi was still there. We've got Beck. Uh, I'm not sure if Fjordtoff was still there. I don't know if he'd gone. Uh, so got, there's loads, loads of Higgy, There's loads of players still there. And and it was October time. 
and my contract was up in the summer. And Brian Robson, I didn't, I never asked for a transfer in my life. Not once did I ask for a move. Brian came came to me, and he just says, he says, John Barnsley in for you, and Barnsley were, I think they were sixth in the Championship. Borough were eighth in the Premier League, and and he came and says, John Paul Wilkinson rang me up as well. He was at Barnsley. Yeah. He says, at Barnsley, uh, Danny Wilson is coming in for you, John. I said, all right. And I, and, I, and I said, well, we'll see what's what. So, of course, uh, Robbo came to me and said, John, I've got an offer on the table from, from uh, uh, Barnsley. It's a good offer. I'm willing to let you go. And I thought, right, OK. If that's, your, if that's what you want then, Brian, then, then so be it. And... Uh, Cut a long story short, in the October, I signed for Barnsley. Uh, come the end of the season, uh, as I left the football club, I remember leaving the football club, and there was tears in my eyes, because I'd yeah. put a six and a half brilliant, and I mean brilliant, I loved it, six and a half brilliant years there. And I remember leaving the, the club, and I remember Robbie, and to all the lads in the dressing room, I've said my cheerio, and Robbie must have turned around to everyone and said, this is a mistake. That was Robbie's words to everyone, this isn't right, this is a mistake. So, and it was 250 grand or so. Uh, but it was nearly, it was 33. It was nearly 33. So what happened then was, uh, come the end of the season, I scored a bunch between, the, in that season, uh, I scored a bundle of goals. Got the Barnsley Player of the Year and we got promoted. Barnsley got promoted. Yeah. And Borough come down. Oh. Borough come down. So so Robbie, Robbie was right. And Robbie, Robbie said we shouldn't let him go. Maybe if, if I had been around, I'm not saying it would have been, but he says this isn't right, it shouldn't happen. But all I'm saying is I I left in October and, and Barnsley went up. And that's the only time in Barnsley's history that they've they have got promoted into the top flight. Yeah. It's uh so it was one of them. So I can't really vouch for that relegation season, uh, because I'd left in October. I still went I still went to watch them in the two cup finals. I was still yeah. there with all the, the, the Borough fans. I was there as a, as a fan as such. Still went there and it was uh, it, it, it was great to see them. You in see, the I, I I knew you were there for for like a couple of months of the relegation season, but obviously with my football knowledge, it's always been a summer transfer window in a January. So yeah. I, I I thought that was the case back then, but no, no, no. I'd, I'd gone in October. Ten, I, tell you, I think my first game for, was the 10th of October. Yeah. That was, that was my first game for Barnsley. Yeah. But, I, but it's one of them. You don't you don't dwell on things. You don't dwell on things. And, and you go, right, OK. <laughs> it's it's your job. We touched it's on that earlier. It's my job. I'm yeah. going down the road here. I've got, I've got a wife and four kids here. Uh, it was an, an opportunity because if I'd waited to the summer... Maybe I, I might not get anything up north. Maybe I had to move the whole family lock, stock and barrel down south. So it was an opportunity to, to stay up north. And uh, I took it and uh, and it clicked. And what we achieved at Barnsley was was phenomenal. It was, that was, that was a, what we did there was, was great. And was Paul Wilkinson a deciding mm -hmm. factor in going back to Barnsley, well, going to Barnsley and joining him and linking up with him again like you had done back at Borough? It was one of the factors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the factors. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just want to, I mean, what he said as well, Wilk would say as well, he says he says the play job, Barnsley play football, it's not long ball stuff and what have you. He says the way they play football is right up your street and you you would adapt to it well here and, and they're the right for you. Uh, and, and sure enough, that was the case. That sure enough, the way that Barnsley played was absolute. It was total football, and and thoroughly they thoroughly deserved uh, getting promoted into the top line. And um, I'm pretty sure you're you're glad that you made that move to be part of that promotion. Do you feel proud to be um, a part of that only ever Barnsley team that has um, promotion to the top flight? Oh, definitely so. You're yeah. you're part of history, uh, and. I was down there a few. I mean, they'd asked me down there uh, just at the end of the season. 
Uh, and sure enough, it was uh, on another time. Uh, it was the 20th anniversary of promotion. They asked me down on my Todd to the Player of the Year do, to make a presentation to Player of the Year do. And I thought, right, they, look, they, look, they do look out for us. They, they do look after it for us as well. It's yeah. a good club. Uh, and I, I only wish good things for Barnsley because certainly, certainly it was a twilight years of my career and to help them achieve. I mean, it's like when I was there, not only did we get promotion, we got the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, not once, but twice. Twice. And then in that time, it's like we had big scalps. We'd beaten Spurs. We'd, we'd beat Man United. I mean, I was fortunate to score home and away against Man United to, to knock them out the, out the, the FA Cup. And a goal against them uh, is always good. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. And it's like, <laughs> and, and, no, and it's, it, they're, they're memorable games. Mem yeah. we'd, we'd be, they're memorable games, not Man United. And let's face it, when we knocked him out the FA Cup, Barnsley knocked him out the FA Cup, and 15 months later, they won the, they won the treble. Yeah. That team won the treble. So they, they weren't, they weren't dummies. So it was, uh, no, no, and, and you, and, and it's like, the Barnsley fans, I always say, the, 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 the Barnsley, when you first go in there, they're like, ah, particularly someone at the age of 33, they've got this little fat lad coming into town, they think, well, is he just here for a payday? And what have you. So they're wary of you at first, but if you do well for them, they'll love you. You're always one of theirs. Yeah. And certainly, certainly that is a case in Barnsley. Uh, and it's like, yeah, that, 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 that was, you might, even though I, I was gutted in the left borough, because I loved it at Borough. But the way it turned out in Barnsley was special as well. It was at the end, at the end of the day, it's football, isn't it? People yeah. move on, you change clubs, you take to that next challenge and go yeah. after that. And you certainly achieved at Barnsley by getting that promotion. Yeah, you're there, Blake. It's one of, it's, Blake, it's one of them. You, looking back to it, you think, just give it a lot. Yeah. Just give it a lot. Like, that's what you just, and, and, it, and if, if the punters can see you just giving it a lot, and that's all they are. You can't always play well. But if you're asked to, to give you a lot there, uh, they'll back you. They'll back you. Flipping back back to the Borough days again, um, I know you, you you won't have had much time with him, but I've heard different stories about this guy because some people think he was all right. Some people think he was a little bit. What was Ravinelli like off the pitch? Thank God that a, a bottle of water out to shut me up, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> Go on, say whatever you like. No, he's, no it, it wasn't. Shall we say, it, it, what, what we'll say first, great talent. Yeah, great very talented player. Oh, great talent, great footballer. But it, shall we just say he didn't endear himself to his teammates? Yeah. Now, when you're in a team... You've, you've, you've got to be one of the lads. You, you've got to be one of the lads. You, you've got to say, right, all for one, one for all. And certainly, I think I, I don't think any of the lads thought that Rav was like that. We, we, Rav would all be like, all for Rav, one for Rav. And, yeah. and, I, and that's, that's, that's the way it was there. And you, that's why it wasn't popular, as, as the Brazilian boys were. It's, it was not, nothing to do with money or anything like that. It's like... That, You've got to muck and roll with sleeves up and got on your teammates, and that's why all the the, the, the Brazilians were, were were so well received in the dressing room. Whereas Rav was probably a, 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 I'm probably say arrogant and maybe looked down his probably looked down looked down at you as such. Yeah, uh, and that's why he didn't endear himself as much as as uh, the South Americans did. It, it it wasn't it wasn't a team player. But great on the pitch. I'm talking about on the pitch, great ability and everything. But, but off the pitch, it, it wasn't like it, 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 his attitude could have been better to his teammates, she was yeah. there. So that a, a massive thing in football is team spirit. Oh, it's everything. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's absolute everything. It's absolute everything. You, you will see, it's like everyone's got to be, they've got to be pulling in the same direction. It's like if you've got two teams out there on the football pitch, and one's, one's got a better team spirit than another, more often than not, but that one will pull yeah. through. I mean, you, you you look at that Man United team now, that's a prime example. The, yeah. 
nobody gets on the dressing room probably toxic week in week out and it and it's yeah. just by how poorly their performance at the minute it goes to show that team spirit's everything yeah oh but yeah. exactly it, exactly it goes a long long way as such and I, I dare say if, if, if Rav I mean it would, I, I don't know I don't know him as a character I've not seen him since those days I mean I, I dare say I would like to think he 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 would think he'd made mistakes. But he certainly did do. He certainly did do. But but a great great ability though. One of the, the best strikers that you, you could get on the pitch. Yeah. Finally, John, it's been absolutely fantastic to have you on. It's been a pleasure to chat all about your career. I've loved having you on. But one final thing: um, life after retirement. I was at Trek. You do you still like to get? involved with the game here and there? Or? Yeah, I'm up at, yeah, I do a bit of coaching with American kids. Yeah. Uh, who came over on scholarships? Uh, I mean, Naki Wells. He started in, uh, in, in the system at, at uh, an ex team at Mainland Bradford. He set a program up, Riesa, where American kids come over here on scholarships, uh, and it works well. So do that. Then, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm up at the I'm up at the borough as well. So I'm, I'm up to a bit of the borough and what have you. Uh, and still, still love com coming up and watching the games. Uh, so well received and what have you and just it's like just uh, the, the fans know is if, if, like, if you've gave your lot for a football club then you, there's a lot of good memories there and and, that, yeah. and that's in both parties for for you uh, and them as well I'd like to think so but uh, no I was getting like I mean I, I, I'm just let's say I'm, I'm privileged and blessed to have the career that I had and it's like I don't look at Think well. I wish I'd earned this or earned that. I just look at the thought. I loved being a professional footballer, but it was like being a professional footballer is, is a roller coaster ride. Right? It's, it's up down. It's up down. It's up down. I was. I've, I've, had, I've been what I think it was five promotions, four of them into the top flight. Yeah. Uh, Cup finals. No, I never. No, no, made the second closest I got to. The, the, I never played in the cup finals. The closest I got was the semis, and that was a Rumbelows Cup against when Man United done his next return. Yeah, uh, that's the yeah. closest I got. Uh, but no, I, I was. I just look and I think I was blessed. Enjoyed my career. Uh, I'm humble about it all, and I think well, I, I can look in the mirror and say right, okay, I'll give it my best shot. Give my best shot, and that's all I can say. And it was like, uh, and yeah, I'm proud of it. Proud of that. Thanks once again, John. Hopefully, I'll see you down Boris sometime. Yep. Okay, yeah. pal. Hope it goes well, mate.